Hello friends and foes, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. And today I'm going to be doing a library tour. My book collection is a combination of my books and my husband's books. I haven't done a count recently of how many books we own. I think the last time I counted it was around 1400, but we've actually acquired books since then. In this room there are 10 different shelves, but we also have three other bookshelves in the house. One is a bookshelf full of music books in our music room. One is a bookshelf full of tech books in his office, and then there's a bookshelf full of inspirational and inspirational fiction books downstairs. But this library tour is just going to cover the books that are in this room. Our books are primarily organized alphabetically by author's last name, as well as by genre. However, there are some sections that are organized slightly different, and I will address that when I get to those sections. I do currently have lights up on the bookshelves because we just got past Christmas. I haven't decided if I'm going to take them down or not yet, but they're still there at the moment. The bookshelves in this room are primarily Billy bookshelves in black. However, I do have two shelves that are some cheap shelves I got at Target at one point, and I still have to replace those with the Billy bookshelves at some point. I know the Billy bookshelves are seen as more affordable bookshelves, but they're actually still pretty pricey to me, so I'll get those at some point. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the room itself, and then I'm going to show you each bookcase and then each individual shelf on each bookcase. I'm not going to pull out every single book on every bookshelf, because that would take several hours for anyone to watch, but I am going to pull out books here and there that I just want to talk about and things like that, and you can also kind of see what books are on each shelf if you want to pause the video or anything like that. shelves in black but I have a couple of shelves that are not they're just some cheap shelves I got at Target like for example this one is one of those shelves I have a whole bunch more of these but I only have two in this room um, those were the primary shelves that we used prior to moving here and getting the Billy book shelves in addition to these shelves I have my little desk area I have a place for my book cart it's just a basic library cart and my TBR machine, and then my desk. Under my desk is a giant banana with a mustache that I use to put my feet on just for, just because. And then I have this wall of various items. These are my notebooks. These are not anywhere near all of my notebooks, but... So this is a book for my work in progress. This is a songwriting journal. This is a book for all my video ideas. This is a notebook for any professional trainings or studies that I have to, you know, participate in. This is just a notebook that I haven't decided what to do with. It's very pretty. This is a notebook that was designed by I Love You For Books. She actually worked with Tomi Adeyemi to design this book to go with the Children of Blood and Bone series. This is just a basic planner. This is a blank bullet journal. This is my actual bullet journal. And then this is a book journal that my best friend gave me. This is a piggy bank that's really fluffy. I just have my cup of pens. I have these tins. This one has washi tape. This one has stamps. I don't know what this one has. I can't remember. And then this one's got like little scent cone things. That's me. Hello. And then this is my ledger of perceived slights. And I have a picture of me and my best friend. 
have a little Tae Young back there. I just have random pieces of art. shelf, just a, a bench, our Star Wars shelf, a nice rug, and then balcony. So I think what we'll do first is go over the tops of the bookshelves. Up here we have Hello Friends and Foes, so it's my intro, my annotated Watchmen edition, and then these two action figures with Iron Man and Captain America. We won these at a trivia night. I totally won the entire night, and then my husband got second place. Over here we have a collection of Shakespeare plays. This is the entire collection of letters of Vincent Van Gogh during his life, a little Vincent Van Gogh Funko Pop, and then a book of unfinished sketches by Vincent Van Gogh. And over here we have a mug full of bookmarks. It's kind of my bookmark collection. I have the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. A random bottle. A rock and roll gnome. A lantern from our wedding. This like hipster gnome that I've had since my internship in 2015. Little mushrooms. Amigurumi crochet B I made, another bottle, Shrek, and no mug. I have a thing for gnomes, okay? This little Mickey Mouse antique book, a Fraggle, and this collection of Disney books from I don't know how long ago. And then over on top of this, we just have some tissues, the Hamilton um, musical book, and this little like projector thing. So the first thing we're going to review is my comic book shelf. This shelf and the rest of the comic shelf is actually alphabetized by the title. So this is the first shelf. On here we have All My Friends Are Dead. It's just a silly book where it's just various creatures and things saying all their friends are dead. I have this little duck squishy. And I have a little Gudetama squishy. This first shelf has my manga. I don't have a lot of manga, but I have Dead Man Wonderland. I have Death Note, the Black Editions. I have Girl from the Other Side, which I am loving. Scott Pilgrim, A Silent Voice. And then these are a couple of like web comic books. So I have like Gudetama, I have the Ono web comics. have poorly drawn lines. And then I have this random like design book which I don't really know what it is but it's, it's interesting looking. On this shelf you have a little Doctor Strange Funko Pop and another little Gudadama Squishy. At the very beginning of the shelf you have graphic memoirs so we have El Defo. We have Speak, the graphic novel. We have a Marvel's Mania, Depression, Michelangelo, and Me by Ellen Forney. This is a great graphic novel about Ellen Forney and her sort of journey with bipolar disorder and discovering that she has this diagnosis and learning to live with it. And then we have Lighter Than My Shadow. After that, we get into just the regular comic books and graphic novels, um, and they're just all by alphabetical order. I have my American Gods books. I have various Batman, 
I have a lot of things by Neil Gaiman, so you'll see that a lot, like Black Orchid, Death from the Sandman Universe. These right here are Courtney Crumran. They're like a middle grade graphic novel series. We have Game of Thrones. So my favorite on the shelf that's not a graphic memoir is actually Arkham Asylum. And this is Grant Morrison and Dave McKean. Dave McKean is the artist that does most of Neil Gaiman's comic books. Like he did the Sandman series and some other things. And I typically don't like books that take place in asylums and, and things like that, but there are certain things about this that I just really enjoyed. And here is the next shelf. Some of my favorites on this shelf are The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil. This book was so funny, but also like kind of serious, and I really liked it. Then we have I Hate Fairyland, which is a Scotty Young book, and I really like his illustration style. I have the first one and the second one. Heroes, and I really love Heroes. Heroes is actually the show that me and my husband used to watch when we were dating. We would watch all the way through, and we'd play games and stuff like that, and it was just like our show when we were dating. This is another favorite on the shelf. This is Anthony Bourdain's Hungry Ghosts. The back of this book is just full of recipes, but the beginning of it is like a dinner party where they're all telling ghost stories and each ghost story has to do with hunger or eating in some way or another. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was very disturbing, but I enjoyed it. We have the Lock and Key series, another Neil Gaiman. Here's another favorite. My favorite thing is monsters. I really like the drawing style. It's kind of like someone just drawing in a notebook. Oh, I was gonna show you a page, but it was inappropriate. So, I'll just keep that closed. The next is Monstrous, which I just thought was super gorgeous. It was beautiful. The story was very interesting, and I'm just so glad to have finally picked it up. And we have Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, which is one of the cutest Marvel comic books that I've ever read. And then we have a couple of Northlanders, which is like a Viking saga. On this shelf, we have an adipose, which is from Doctor Who and isn't actually related to anything on the shelf. We have On a Sunbeam, which is actually just a really, really, really great graphic novel by Tilly Walden. It's like a really cool like space opera. I really enjoyed it. And I have the Paper Girl series and Saga, Sandman series, which I need to get the rest of, but that's more Nell Gaiman. Snot Girl is another favorite. I just love the art style. And actually the Sandman series is what originally got me into Neil Gaiman as an author and he's one of my favorites now. Then we have Swamp Thing, which Alan Moore is another one of my favorite comic book authors. So I have Swamp Thing by him as well as Eve for Vendetta and then I have some more on the next shelf. I have the Tea Dragon Society which is just adorable. This copy of V from Vendetta was actually given to me by one of my first like internet friends. He sent it to me and it just means a lot to me because of that. Violent Cases is another really good Neil Gaiman graphic novel. And then we have the beginning of The Walking Dead compendiums. And then down here we have the bottom shelf where I have The Walking Dead. Right over here. And then I have some of my Watchmen collection. I have Before Watchmen which has Rorschach and the Comedian, which are my two favorite characters in Watchmen. And then I have my initial copy of Watchmen. And this is like a special edition, which moves when you move it. And then we have some of the Witcher comic books. And then a Batman encyclopedia that I used when I took a Batman philosophy course during college. These are all single issue comic books. And then we have a couple of books that are like cartoonist books. I think this one's upside down. It was. And we also have some, you know, Calvin and Hobbes. And then we have like some children's books in here, like Yertle the Turtle and All the Places You'll Go. This is one of my favorite children's books that we have, A Meal of the Octopus. I just thought it was cute. 
also have Cinnamon, which is another book by Neil Gaiman. And it's gorgeous. I'm working on collecting all the Dr. Seuss books, but like I have a hard time spending as much money as they cost on them. And then we have the next shelf. This shelf contains plays, poetry, mythology, and folklore, classics, books in other languages, and miscellaneous, and then the beginning of our just fiction section. This first shelf is plays and poetry. So over here we just have some random plays. We have Shakespeare, and then we start with the Norton Anthology of Poetry. We have Dante's Inferno, Leonard Cohen, this is a really, really pretty edition of Selected Poems of Emily Dickinson. We have Robert Frost, Rupi Carr, Paradise Lost, and then we have Complete Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. I have a little Edgar Allan Poe Funko Pop and a mini um, book of Tales of Mystery and Imagination. And then we have these, which are different works of Edgar Allan Poe. These were actually originally part of our work library. I work at a state psychiatric facility, so it actually has it stamped on the pages. It has like our, the name of our hospital and psychiatric hospital on it. And it's only volumes 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then I have Shell Silver Scenes Where the Sidewalk Ends. This is the 30th anniversary special edition. Then we have the mythology shelf. This is another one that's arranged slightly different. This is just a big mythology book that includes a lot of different types of mythology. And then we just have a fairy tales and folklore book. And then we go into Norse mythology. I have a little Viking figurine and a little Viking ship that we got when we were in Norway. I have Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology. I have these two books, which I think we ordered from Grimfrost. This one is just Spirits and Monsters of Scandinavian Folklore. And it's got Ouroboros around it. And this one is just all about Norse gods. And we have more Norse myths, Icelandic myths, Norse myths. Uh, and then we start getting into like Irish and Celtic folklore. And then I have this little donkey which is signed by Gaelic Storm which is like a, an Irish band. And then I have the Mabinogion, the Kalevala. I have this, which is just Irish fairy tales and legends, which actually should maybe be on this side of these. And then I have um, They Dance in the Sky, which is Native American Star Myths. And then this is our first shelf of classics. So the first one is my really pretty edition of Aladdin and the Arabian Nights. I really love these fancy like Barnes and Noble editions of classics. Then I have this gorgeous edition of Aesop's Fables, it's illustrated. Then we have Hans Christian Andersen, we have some of Maya Angelou, um, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. I have this really nice version of The Wizard of Oz. This is just the first five novels. It has like these um, metallic green pages. So I'm Ray Bradbury. I got this, which is um, Tales from Chaucer. This is a really nice like edition. It looks really cool. And then I get into my Charles Dickens. I have Tell Two Cities. I have three copies of that. I have so David Copperfield, Nicholas Nickleby, and then Sketches. And then I have a couple of Sherlock Holmes. I just have A Study in Scarlet and then The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And I have me a little pipe that I used in like a sketch video one time. And then I have this monocle, which is actually something that my husband gave me. When we were dating our first Christmas, we actually got each other monocles. We didn't discuss this beforehand or anything. We just both thought it would be funny to give each other monocles. And so... We ended up both having monocles. <laughs> so we actually wore these in our wedding. He wore his around his neck and I wore mine attached to my shoe. And then I have the Nutcracker by Alexander Dumas. 
which is like my favorite Christmas story. Lord of the Flies. Then I have this, which is like a really big version of Grimm's Fairy Tales. It's illustrated and it's really, really pretty. We have like Catch-22 and the Odyssey and the Iliad, which I'd like to get a nicer version of these, but that's what we got right now. Then this is slightly out of frame, but have a really nice edition of Robin Hood. This is another one of those um, Barnes & Noble really pretty editions. And the pages are like a copper color. And then on this shelf I have a little sock monkey. Um, I used to always want there's a piece of dog fur on him. I used to always want a sock monkey and I ended up getting this one. I think my mom gave it to me or something and I had him in my car forever so he like faded a lot on the front. He's still really bright on the back but yeah. And this is a little thumb thingy that you can use to like hold books open. I have this little carved owl that my husband got me somewhere. This is like a little drawer of mini books um, by Beatrix Potter. These are like in the world of Peter Rabbit. So there's like quite a bit of books in there. On the shelf itself we have a really pretty edition of Les Mis. We have this big book of Chronicles of Narnia. I'm actually waiting on a set of hardback books for Chronicles of Narnia to get here. I have the Giver Quartet. Uh, I have this really pretty edition of Winnie the Pooh. It's the like complete tales of Winnie the Pooh. It's got like gold sort of pages as illustrated. And then right around here we start with the Tolkien. We got the Cimmerillion, um, some other stories from the same universe of Tolkien. We have two editions of The Hobbit. And then we actually have a lot more Tolkien on another shelf and on the shelf below this. On this next shelf we have Continued Tolkien. These aren't actually in the Lord of the Rings series. These are books about the Tolkien universe. So like this is the Battles of Tolkien, this is the Dark Powers of Tolkien, this is an Encyclopedia of Tolkien. And then we get off of the Tolkien. Like we have The Art of War by Sun Tzu. We have some H.G. Wells. We have this book of famous Chinese short stories by Lin Yutong. And then I have this it's a Christmas treasury. This is just various Christmas stories. I put it at the end because I wasn't sure where else to put it. And then we get into books that are in other languages. Like I have this Japanese picture book that I got in New York. We have some French books. This one's about mushrooms. I thought it was adorable. This is a French comic book. We have French Lord of the Rings. And then we get into some German Kurt Vonnegut. Um, and I tried to get my husband the Cimmerillion in German one year and I accidentally got him this, which is like an essay, a published essay on the Cimmerillion that's in German. And then he finally got the Cimmerillion this year for Christmas. And then we have some Edgar Allan Poe in German. And then we have the miscellaneous books. These are Milk and Vine. They're kind of a parody of Milk and Honey, but it's just illustrated vines. And we have the Oregon Trail series. It's like a choose your own adventure book. And then we have the politically correct bedtime stories. This is the first one and the second one is on the shelf below this. And they're so funny. So we have the second one down on this shelf along with a Zombies vs. Nazis. Um, when Garden Gnomes Attack, which I thought is just really funny because I have a lot of gnomes. And then I have this book, which is called Cocktails. It was made when some romance author tried to copyright the word cocky and it did not go over well a lot of people were mad about it because creative freedom and whatnot and so they published this huge compendium of different books or different stories with the word cocky in them and stuff like that so it was a limited release kind of book and someone actually got this for me i don't really read romance but i thought it was hilarious and then all the money from these actually went to this like fund for artist creativity freedoms or something i don't really know what it was but it was cool and then we start just the fiction. We start with Elizabeth Acevedo, which I love so much. Her books are so beautiful and like the writing is beautiful, but also like outside it's just gorgeous. Look at this. This is so pretty. We have a few more. I don't have a lot to say about this shelf um, because I don't read a lot of just plain fiction. 
Um, a lot of this isn't mine. Another one that I enjoy was I Can Make This Promise. And I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver was an amazing book. This next full bookcase is fiction continued all the way to here. And then we have science fiction for the rest of the shelf. So on the shelf I have Steve from Stranger Things and his little Scoops Ahoy uniform. I have this little book fan. And I have a little gnome. First of many gnomes on my bookshelves. I like gnomes. On this shelf I have a lot of books that kind of got me into um, psychology. These three here are all by Ellen Hopkins. They're written in verse which I really really enjoy and she's actually what got me into reading verse. She also got me really interested in psychology and mental health, which is ironic because her representations aren't actually the best, but they did get me interested in the mental health field. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green is another great representation. It's primarily OCD representation and it's so, so good. I read that one and also Paperweight when I had my Green Ribbon Book Club, which was all about reading books with mental health representation. Then I have my Alex Ryder series. I can't find the rest of them in the same edition as these. But I reread the series like a million times when I was younger because I was obsessed with spies and I wanted to pretend I was a spy and I was just obsessed. So I read Stormbreaker probably a million times and every time a new book came out I'd reread the series. Loved it. And to some of my husband's Lawhead books. He has a lot of books by Stephen Lawhead. On this next shelf I have another little gnome. Um, had this little carved bear. And I have my pitch pipe. I don't know why it's actually in here but this is where it is. I have a couple more books on here that I read that have some sort of mental health or mental illness representation. That's primarily any fiction that I read, it's usually for that reason. So like A Tragic Kind of Wonderful, Neverland, Heroin Sparrow, and also Wild Awake over here. These are all books that have mental health or mental illness representation. I had this chonker by Alan Moore that I haven't read yet, but I love Alan Moore's comic books, so I figured I would try this out. I just haven't quite gotten to it yet. Because it's huge. I have Fight Club and I just got this by Chuck Palahniuk. This is a signed edition um, called The Invention of Sound. It's about a Foley artist, which I used to want to be a Foley artist when I was little. So I totally got it and it's signed. So I thought that was super cool. I got this really, I got this really pretty edition that's signed of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and it has black sprayed edges and I got this because I thought I would absolutely love it and I still haven't been able to get into it. I tried listening to it because I thought it'd be a cool audiobook since it's about a band and it's sort of serialized like interviews but I just I haven't been able to get into it so I'm gonna try reading it physically and maybe I can get into it. Oh I have Jason Reynolds A Long Way Down. This book is in verse and it's such an amazing book. As you can tell it has a lot of awards so it's really good. I have Holes, which I loved when I was growing up. I have these little books, which are like westerns, and I haven't read them. I got them in a free box somewhere, and I'm sure they're terrible. Which is why I got them and thought they would be interesting. <laughs> and then I have these little rocks. There's a video with me and my best friend trying to paint rocks to like book covers. And so this is Rabbit and Robot. This one is Space Opera. And then this one was The Wicked Deep. On this next shelf, we have a series of unfortunate events. I didn't actually read these when I was little. My cousins did, but I never did. But then a couple of years ago, I decided to do sort of a read-along with them and read them all in October. And so I got these all used either at a thrift store or on thriftbooks.com. Then I have a signed Sherwood by Megan Spooner. I have Sadie, which was so good. I think this is a signed edition too. I like to collect signed copies of things. Secret History, which was terrible. On the Come Up, which was awesome. And we have Eliza and Her Monster by Francesca Zappia, which was absolutely amazing. And this book, uh, I just really enjoyed it. This is another one that I read for my Green Ribbon Book Club when it existed. And this shelf starts the science fiction. Our science fiction section includes science fiction, so space operas, robots, zombies, anything dystopian, anything superhero, all went into our science fiction section. With the exception of Star Wars, which we put somewhere else. So some highlights on the shelf are Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, this really really ugly book called Cage of Man which I left a sticker on and it's just it looks so terrible I can't wait to read it. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet was an absolutely beautiful book. I, I enjoyed this so so much. 
And then we have the Hunger Games series. We never got the first one on hardback for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe one day we will. I don't know. And then the beginning of the Expanse series, which for some reason after these first three books, they switched where the author and the title are, which is just really annoying. I don't know why they did that. I wish I could punch them for it, but I can't. So here's the rest of the Expanse series. And so they switched and they put the author name here and the title of the books here, as opposed to what they did on these books, which was the opposite. On this shelf, we have Philip K. Dick books, which I really, really enjoy his writing and his short stories, especially especially Minority Report. This one looks like a little notebook. This is my favorite short story by Philip K. Dick. I think it's my favorite because I watched the movie with my dad when I was younger, and it was just me and my dad watched um, a lot of action movies together. And so it's just a good memory with him. Then we have this cursed thing and some superhero books a couple more superhero books zombie books a lot of the zombie books pretty much all the zombie books are my husband's he loves zombies i'm not huge on zombies honestly and then we have this next shelf which has dune which was just okay and we have the illuminae files which i really really enjoyed the first one i haven't gotten to the other two yet but i really really enjoyed the first one and then we have some more lawhead books also have A Wrinkle in Time, which I haven't read yet, but it seems like a cool little science fiction middle grade. It might be more like science fantasy, but I'm not really sure yet. This shelf actually continues on with science fiction and then gets into my gothic and paranormal books and then goes into the books that are based on other media at the bottom there. We have Shatter Me, which was like, eh. I have The Lunar Chronicles and The Renegade series by Marissa Meyer. I haven't finished getting the series. I haven't finished reading the series. I've only read the first one, but I enjoyed it. Some more zombie books. And then we have This is How You Lose the Time War, which I haven't read yet, but it has gotten so much praise that I can't wait to read it. The Test by Sylvan Neuville, which I really enjoy Sylvan Neuville's writing, and this book was just such an amazing little novella. And then I have my Monsters on Candle. This was made by Amber Dior and her Etsy shop, Say Delir. And it was made for my Monsterathon readathon that takes place the entire months of September. It's all about reading monster books. On this next shelf, we have the Venti trilogy, which I adored. I really, really adored it. I love Nadia Korafor. I love this writing, and I love the representation of PTSD in these books. It's just amazing. These are both from the Scythe trilogy. I haven't read the third one. I've heard that it's really disappointing, so I'm scared to read it. But I really enjoyed these two. We have An Unkindness of Ghosts, which I'm actually currently reading by River Solomon. A Space Opera, which I just enjoyed so much by Catherine M. Valente. This is basically Eurovision in space, so it's super quirky, it's super weird, and I super love it. The only thing I didn't like is it was a very info dumpy, but other than that, loved it. This is the beginning of my gothic literature and paranormal fiction section. The majority of the section is just like the rest of my books and they're by alphabetical by author's last name, but at the beginning of this I put my Frankenstein and Dracula stuff. I have primarily Frankenstein books in my collection, but I also have a little bit of Dracula. So I have this little candle holder with Frankenstein's face. I have this little Frankenstein Funko Pop. I have this super ugly purple edition of Frankenstein that I bought because I loved it. It's so terrible. It smells really old too. Uh, steampunk Frankenstein. I have this like soft Barnes and Noble edition of Frankenstein. Like reddish pages and a really cool like inside cover. I have this tiny version of Frankenstein, which is super ugly, but I wanted it so I could do some annotation without feeling stressed out. I have this kind of pop art version of Frankenstein. And then I have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, which is not Frankenstein, but it is based on Frankenstein, so I put it with Frankenstein. And then I get into my Dracula. This is a really gorgeous version of Dracula that has a lot of beautiful like writing. It's got some red like ink on there somewhere in certain places and it's got illustrations in certain places. Like this. 
and I have an, a pop art version of Dracula that matches my Frankenstein. And then we actually get into the books that are in alphabetical order. One really great one is How to Recognize a Demon Has Become Your Friend by Linda Addison. We read this as the group book for the Monsterathon in 2020. It's a book of verse and poetry and short stories. And Linda Addison was the first black woman to receive the Bram Stoker Award. So it seemed fitting to put her right next to Dracula. I got this really pretty edition of Jane Eyre. I have this really pretty edition of Wuthering Heights, but I've heard that this edition of Wuthering Heights is kind of not the best. Apparently it's like missing a lot of the meat of the story. But it's a really pretty version. I didn't realize that it was missing so much of the story when I bought it. But it's still nice to have. I'm really excited about this book because it's about Sasquatches. So that excites me. On this next shelf, we just have continued paranormal fiction. And gothic fiction. The first one is... Monstrosity by Laura Diaz de Arce. This is one of my friends that I met on Twitter and I just adore her so much. We have so much in common and we're always on the same wavelength. I just really enjoy her as a person. And this is a book of monstrous short stories and they are just so haunting and creepy and I just love them. Then we have my Welcome to Night Vale podcast. These, these books are actually just the podcast written down. Whereas these books are actual stories. They're standalone novels, but they take place in the town of Night Vale. This book I adored so much. I loved it, and I can't wait to read the others. And Alice Isn't Dead is another podcast by Joseph Fink. And this book had a really good, like, anxiety representation in it, which I enjoyed. And we have my smallest book in my library, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Gilman. It's more of a short story, I guess. Got some Hannibal. I have Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, which I adored when I read it. It's set up kind of like an Ikea catalog, and it doesn't really bother me like a lot of horror books do. And then way over here on the edge, we have Vanicula, which is the cutest story. Then on this next shelf, we have Legend of Sleepy Hollow. This is a really cool Barnes & Noble edition. It's like a soft, um, nice version. The orange pages, and a cool inside cover. I have this really pretty um, penguin edition of The Haunting of Hill House. I say pretty, it's more just like creepy and I love it. Another great one is The Ballad of Black Tom, which we read for the Goth Lit Club recently and I enjoyed it so much. We also read The Haunting of Hill House and Dracula for that book club. We have my Twilight books, just ignore that. They're from years ago. The Bell Jar, ooh, Wilder Girls was absolutely amazing. This book was so creepy and just like disturbing and unsettling. I just loved it. It's been described as like a rewritten Lord of the Flies, but she actually didn't intend that. She just accepted the comparison after it was written. Um, when I met Rory Power, I was just delighted. She was such a pleasant person. She was so funny. I actually ended up doing like painted edges of this, making it look all foresty. But... When I met Rory Power, I also met Megan Shepard, who wrote The Mad Men's Daughter. She kind of wrote the series of books, and they're based off gothic books, but they're like retellings. I have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I have like, this is a condensed version, the regular version. And then I have this, which is like this big wide version that has writing in it already. So I was going to use it to annotate once I read it. And then, of course, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Loved this book, and I really need, like, a nice version of it. That version's okay. It's just there are really pretty versions out there that I want. Down here, we have some true crime books right here. And then we get into books that are based on other media. So, like, this is The Rise of Kiyoshi. We have some Doctor Who. We have some Ari Salvatore, like, um, D&D books. And Elder Scrolls, Gears of War. We have Godzilla. Halo books. I have like a Superman book. This one I think is a Warhammer novel and then like an X-Men book. So these are all based on like other things. I have a Dear Evan Hansen book and I wasn't sure if I should put it down here or not. It's based on the musical and I just, it didn't quite fit with these so I just left it with fiction. And this corner shelf right here is our smallest shelf and it is just all of our favorite books. They're not really in any particular order. Like, if there's a series, it's together, but other than that, there's not really an order to it. 
So I am going to go over all the books on these shelves because they're our favorites. So I have the Themis Fowles trilogy, which I really, really enjoyed by Sylvan Neuville. This is written in like interviews and news reports and like personal journal entries. I adored it. This is just a little galaxy jar that I made with my little family, my little booktube family, um, during a read-along that we hosted. Then I have Binding by Bridget Collins, which is a really cool book because it's, it's told from one perspective for half the book and then it switches to another perspective. And it plays a lot with memory, which I enjoy. And we have a really pretty edition of The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I have another edition of this, but this is the one that I wanted to put up here because it's just gorgeous. Same thing with Neverwhere. I think I have another edition of Neverwhere, but I liked this one because it was kind of illustrated. And then I have Battle Royale by Kushin Takami, which is such a good book. I read it after Hunger Games because I was told that it basically is the same premise but came way before. And I read this thing in like one day and I enjoyed it so, so much. So on this shelf we have Nod, which was one of my first like reads when I joined booktube. It's very like George Orwell style, where everybody kind of forgets how to sleep. And I absolutely loved it. I analyzed the crap out of it and I just really enjoyed it. And then we have Silver in the Wood, which is like Green Man mythology, which I wish I had more of. I have more Neil Gaiman. This is Stardust. I loved it. This. this was my first like favorite Neil Gaiman book. I actually got this copy while on my honeymoon, so it's a little special. And then Kindness of Magicians by Cat Howard is my absolute favorite book. I actually painted the edges to this one like a light green because spring is like a big deal in this book. And then we have Mexican Gothic, which I read in 2020. It was the first book for the Goth Lit Club, and it was just so haunting and magical and beautiful. But in like the most disturbing way. Then we have The Deep by River Solomon, which is so significant because it was based on a song by my favorite music group. And when I first heard that song, I was like, this needs to be a book. So when it became a book, I was like amazed. Then we have The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Um, we also have a Cimmerillion, which goes here, but it's currently being read. So Next we have Middle Game by Shannon McGuire, which was another really recent read that I just adored and fell in love with immediately. And then we have The Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. This is the first series that has hooked me in like a really long time. I've read the first three. I'm now on book four. But it's really good. And my husband absolutely loved the series. But then his favorite series, besides Lord of the Rings, is Malazan, Book of the Fallen series. We're slowly replacing all of the mass market paperbacks with other versions. It's really hard to get a hold of them, though. Because they were only printed in, like, hardback for, like, a very little bit of time. We did manage to find this big floppy version of the first book. And I ordered him a hardback version, so it's on the way. And then we have a hardback of the second one. And then on this next shelf, I have my little moon which lights up when I touch that but you can't really see it because of the light. And we have more of the Malazan Book of the Fallen books. These are the ones that we only have in mass market paperback. And then we have these of the series which are in the bigger versions of paperback and then these are like the old paperback versions. Next we have Hyperion which is one of my husband's favorites. Um, we have Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut which is one of my favorites. This was actually my favorite book for a really long time. And we have The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I keep trying to find a nice hardback, and I keep thinking things are hardbacks, and then ordering them, and then they end up being paperbacks. But this is a really floppy paperback, so I'm okay with it. Then we have The Three Body Problem by Chin Lu. The City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper. These are in the wrong order for some reason. The City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper. I'm waiting for, I think it's Empire of Gold to come out in paperback, and then I have Strange the Dreamer. I haven't read the second one because I've heard it's not good, so I'm just avoiding it. And then down here we have my Victoria Schwab shelf. I have more Victoria Schwab books, but these are the ones that I put on the shelf because these are my favorites. The Darker Shade of Magic series, and then The Near Witch is actually my favorite Victoria Schwab book. I'm trying to get the black editions of all three of the books, and then the metallic editions of all three books, but I just haven't been like paying attention to spend money on those at the moment. I've been using my money to buy new books instead. Here is the next shelf, and at the top you have my Alice in Wonderland books, and then it starts our fantasy section. So 
So first up is my Alice in Wonderland shelf. This has um, all my editions of Alice in Wonderland, a couple of accessories, and then a book about Lewis Carroll. This does not, however, include any Alice in Wonderland retellings I have. This right here is just a notebook, an Alice in Wonderland notebook that I thought was really cool looking. I haven't done anything inside of it yet, but I just liked it. Then I have my little mushroom. Um, that is a Hatter like teacup. This little mushroom container that was my great grandmother's. And then a Cheshire Cat mug that he disappears when there's like hot liquid in here. And it has all my little pieces of paper for my TBR machine. This is an Alice Wonderland version that is illustrated by Ralph Steadman. This version is illustrated by Anna Bond. I kind of have to move everything just so I can get to it. This version has the original illustrations, but it also has a couple other stories in it. This is just the original as well, with a nice cover. This one is in French. And I don't know who illustrated this one. This one's illustrated by Yayoi Kusama. This one is illustrated by Camille Rose Garcia. This one has just the original illustrations, but it's just a nice Barnes & Noble edition. And then this one is Alice in Wonderland with the original illustrations on one side, and then on the other side it's Five Little Peppers. I don't know. And then this is an edition from like 1904. It was my great-grandmother's. This is a mystery of Lewis Carroll. I think it's just like a story about his life, and I found it for free when I was in college. And then this is just an annotated Alice in Wonderland. This shelf just starts the fantasy section. I have this little gnome guy who's adorable. And then this is a picture of a bunch of people from BookCon. Oh, I feel focus. Yeah. The fantasy section actually starts out with these two books, which are um, books of like short stories by like a ton of different authors. Some of my favorites on this shelf are Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I have the first and second. I've only read the first one so far, but I loved it. I loved the magic system in that one. And then I also have The Assassination of Brangwain Spurge is my face out book for this shelf because I adored it so much. It's so cute, but also like the way it's done is great. It's like two different point of views of the same situation. So it's really cool. And this of course is a very beautiful, but not that great book. <laughs> And the one on the shelf that I am like most anticipating reading is um, Te Do No Song by Odafe Atogan. It just seems like it has some kind of like music magic in it, which is exciting. Then we have this shelf, which my Six of Crows is upside down. I don't know what that's all about. But I have my Lee Bardugo stuff on the shelf. And then I have my Serafina and the Black Cloak series. I'm actually, I think, missing the fifth book. I think he has a fifth book. I'm not sure. It's by Robert Beattie. This series takes place right around where I live, which is what made me so excited about it because there's not like a lot of fantasy that takes place near my home. So I loved this for that. It's a middle grade series and it has catamounts in it, which are cats that turn into people. And then this is another book by him in the same like world, I guess, but it, I haven't read it yet but it's called Willa of the Wood, and it's just a gorgeous cover. And then we have the Looking Glass Wars trilogy, which I was obsessed with in, maybe it was middle school? I don't remember. I loved it so much, and I need to reread it again because it was just some of my favorite, because I love Alice Wonderland retellings, and it's just like probably the coolest rendition of Alice Wonderland I've ever read. This shelf has my little fox guy on it, and then like my Holly Black books. I really loved Holly Black when I first started reading her because I loved the idea of fairies but in a really dark setting because, you know, up to that point I'd only seen fairies portrayed as these really, like, innocent, happy, cute beings and any mythology I read about them said opposite. So when I got to actually read, you know, her version of fairies, I was really excited about it. And then I have the Cruel Prince series. These two are signed. This one's not. I really wanted to get the Black editions too just because... I thought they were cool looking. And then over here I have Summerland. This book was my favorite one probably between middle and high school. I don't remember, but it was it was my favorite one for a while. Because what I would do is I would just go in the library and pick out like any book that looked really chunky and keep that for a while. And I remember really liking this book. It was kind of nonsensical, which I kind of really liked. Then you have this next shelf right here. On this shelf, probably my favorite 
is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. I really, really enjoyed this book. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did because it kind of had this like romance vibe about it. But it's just like such a cool like fantasy book. And then these Glenn Cook books are mostly my husband's. He likes a lot of long fantasy series. And these Armas Fowl books are from one of my best friends growing up. And he let me borrow them and then I never read them and I kept forgetting to give them back. And now I feel terrible and I can't get in touch with him to get them to him because I feel like it'd be awkward. So, whoops. And then on this last shelf, I have Kill the Farm Boy and No Country for Old Gnomes, which my husband really enjoyed. I haven't read them yet. And then the start of his Malazan Book of the Fallen series with the mass market paperbacks, all the ones that we haven't replaced yet, and then books of short stories that go along with those. And I think, I don't know if these are connected to the Malazan Book of the Fallen universe or not, but yeah. Here's the next bookcase, and it's just Fantasy Continued. On the shelf, we just have some Ian Esselman books. We have Magic for Liars. This is probably the book I'm most excited to read that I haven't read yet on the shelf. And then I just have Neil Gaiman galore over here. I have this nice version of Good Omens that I got from Waterstones. And this is like my normal version of Ocean at the End of the Lane. That's different from the illustrated edition. And then, and then here's Unnatural Creatures by Neil Gaiman. This is just a compilation of short stories. Um, they're not all by Neil Gaiman. There's just a lot of different authors, but he sort of compiled them together and so Here's the next shelf and this shelf is actually pretty bland. So that's why there's so much stuff on it So I have my quote board with my favorite quote on it Life may have given you a cactus, but you don't have to sit on it. Now you have my little my little dude from my neighbor Totoro I got a little bird whistle and then I have this uh, as another galaxy jar and this one is kind of gross. It had a mushroom in it at one point. I need to probably just clean that out and make a new one. And then behind that we have The Princess Bride. This is a really pretty edition. It's got really pretty colorful maps and everything in it. This is just the Terry Goodkin Sword of Truth series. The Terry Goodkin books continue right here. I got me a little gnome. I have the Magician series. This is one on this shelf that I'm really looking forward to reading. It's Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. Goose Girl, which was one of the first, like, fantasy books, aside from the Chronicles of Narnia, that really got me into fantasy. I read this and I was like, wow, fairy tales can be terrible and scary, too. And for some reason, that made me want to read it. Um, I have the 10,000 Doors of January. This is the first arc I actually got at BookCon. Someone just handed it to me and I was like, okay, cool. I got this little cat. Um, and then I have the Dwarves and the War of the Dwarves by Marcus Heights. Of course we have like the Malice, the Faithful and the Fallen series. And Descendant of the Crane, which I really need to read. Because it's gorgeous. I heard way too many good stuff on that one to not read it. And then these two books are um, from an author that I met at Book Con. I actually bought these two books from her. Her name is Tony, C. Tony Graham. Here we have my Christina Henry books. I love Christina Henry. She writes really dark retellings that I just adore. Um, these two are from Alice Wonderland. There's another one now called Looking Glass, I think. And it's got like short stories from the same universe. I don't have that one yet. And then Girl in Red is a, a Little Red Riding Hood retelling and Lost Boys a Peter Pan retelling. Um, the Dark Tide, I read that recently. It was so good. And The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This is a really, really cool urban fantasy that takes some inspiration from, um, what's his face? Lovecraft. Yeah. This is also a Christina Henry book, so I'm not sure why it's separated. Let's fix that. Far and Gray, really, really good. I actually painted the edges of this one. This is like one of the first, like, painted edges things I tried. I got Cathedral of Myth and Bone and Roses and Rot by Kat Howard because she wrote my favorite book. I figured that I would get these. I haven't read them yet, but they're on my like more immediate TBR. The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington is a book that me and my husband uh, started reading together when we were about to move into this house and we were painting and we were listening to this one together. I haven't gotten to the second one yet. I read the first one and finished it. I started the second one and then I never finished it. And then we have Black Leopard Red Wolf, another one that I painted the edges 
of it didn't go quite as well, but it was fun. It's a really pretty cover. And then the Fifth Season Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, which I've only read the first one, but it was so, so good. So I can't wait to get to the others. It's just a really complicated, like, magic system. So I am just taking my time because it took a lot of brain power to get through. Then we have the Eye of the World series right here on this shelf. I don't really have much of an interest in it. My husband read the whole thing. And just from, you know, his comments, I don't really feel like it's something I'm going to be super interested in. And we have this nice version of the first one. And then I have Howl's Moving Castle, which is something I adored. I'm hoping to get the Folio Society version of it, but we'll see. And then I have The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin also. Down here, I have the Phantom Tollbooth hiding in this little corner. And then I have the Dark Tower series that I haven't read yet. Poppy War, which was amazing. I can't wait to get the second and third one so I can finally dive into those. And then we have some more Lawhead books. And then we have the very last shelf. Ignore the lights. They're kind of a mess. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep them up or take them down yet now that Christmas is over. But this is just the end of my fantasy shelves. Alright, so this is the first shelf of the last bookcase in this little area. Um, and at the beginning we have the Stephen Lawhead Paradise War trilogy. This is also something on my more immediate TBR because it has a lot of magic and species in common with my work in progress. We have this big Ursula K. Le Guin, Books of Earth Sea. This is a really gorgeous edition. It's got a nice pretty dragon on it. I have Jessica Lee's Beyond a Darkened Shore. This is a really cool combination of Norse and Celtic mythology. And the author actually lives in the same county as I do. We have some Sarah J. Mass that I haven't really gotten to. Um, I've read the first of both of these series, but that's it. And then we have Gregory Maguire books. He writes some dark retellings. I struggled with Wicked. I got most of the way through it and had to give it up. Um, but I've read part of Mirror Mirror as well. His writing, I really find it interesting. It just takes a lot of just uh, willpower to get through sometimes. This is an Alice Wonderland retelling. And then I recently bought this. It's a Wild Winter Swan. And it's actually signed by him. It was 50% off. But it's actually signed by him somewhere in here. There it is. So that was exciting. And then we have this nice little middle grade book called Snow and Rose, which is super, super cute. And then we have the start of the Game of Thrones series. On this shelf, we have the rest of the Game of Thrones series. We have Unhooked, which is another like Peter Pan retelling. And I really, really enjoyed this. I just enjoy most retellings of anything, honestly. This I got from a guy at a renaissance fair called Nobody's Business. <laughs> it's a mess. I love it. And then I recently got the Wayward Children series because I love the middle game so much that I got this for Christmas. So I haven't read it yet, but I got the whole series, so I can't wait to dive into it. A Blade So Black was an amazing Alice Wonderland retelling. I think it would be even cooler if it was like a comic book or something. I feel like it, the visuals would carry a lot more in like a comic book format, but it was so good. It was very Buffy-esque. Cersei by Madeline Miller was so good. I actually got this for like negative eight dollars. <laughs> I got this at a used bookstore and there were like 13 bucks in it and it cost five dollars, so yeah, that was cool. That was awesome. Meant to be. This was my first version of The Night Circus that I first read. I read this way before joining BookTube, so like I didn't know all the hype behind it. I just knew it looked cool and it liked something I would enjoy, and I really, really loved it. But this is the first version that I read. And then I have Gideon the Ninth. The arc, I actually have a signed arc that I got at BookCon. I think so. I think it's signed. Yeah. So that's cool. And then I have the version that has the black sprayed edges. Here's our next shelf where we have Girls of Paper and Fire, which I loved when I first read it. I haven't read the second one yet because I'm scared, but the first one was really, really good. I actually have the arc of the second one too. 
uprooted. I adored. I think someone gave it to me, but I can't remember if that's what happened or not. And then this one, the surface breaks. I actually read during this like retelethon that was hosted by Common Spence and some other folks, and I loved it, and they hated it so much, but I adored it. And then I was like, did I read the same book as everybody else? Because I adored it, and they were like wanting to burn it, calling it like a dumpster fire and everything. And so maybe I need to reread it and see like what I missed because I, I loved it. Um, we also have the Aragon series. I've only read the first one. I was eh about it, but I did buy his new book, um, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars because it was signed. But I've only heard kind of boring things about it. I've heard that it's not that great. It's kind of slow. So we'll see. We'll see if I like it or not. And at the end over here, you can't really see it behind this book, we have the start of the Discworld series. On this next shelf, the Discworld series continues. We only have 10 of the books. And then I have the first book of the Miss Peregrines, and I have the first book of Percy Jackson. I have Black Sun by Rebecca Rowan Horse, which I'm hoping to read this month. This is a gorgeous book. Veronica Roth's Chosen Ones also, and then I have the start of the Witcher series over here. These are the two prequels. I've read those, like I read those a couple years ago, but I haven't read the rest. But we do have the rest here. I read most of Blood of Elves and then I like lost my spot and ended up kind of giving up on it at the time. And we have um, Andrew Sapkowski's new book as well. The Tower of Fools. My issue with our Witcher editions are that they have like video game they have the video game covers, and so what's on the cover doesn't always apply to what's in the book, so it's weird. Then I have the rest of my V.E. Schwab collection. These are the books that I love, but they're not my favorites. I have this, which is one of the prettiest books on my shelves, called Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. Long season. Um, Cry of the Orange Tree is one of my favorite books. I just didn't put it on my favorite shelf because it takes up so much space, but it's so... Ugh, I loved this book. I marked the heck out of it. And then we have these other books down here. This bottom shelf is mostly books that I haven't read yet or that are my husband's. Muse of Nightmares I haven't gotten to because I haven't heard good things and I'm kind of dreading it. Nevermore I enjoyed a lot. And Ember in the Ashes I was just given for Christmas and I have heard nothing but amazing things about the series by Sabatier and I cannot wait to read that. Peculiar Apparel I bought because I saw Jeff Vandermeer in conversation with Lee Bardugo, I think, at BookCon, and I just like his description of his writing and the fact that he's very absurdist, so I'm hoping that I'll enjoy that. The Replacement was one of my first, like, intro into fairy books. Besides Holly Black, there was The Replacement, which I thought was super cool. It's like a changeling, and he's like a musician, and it's just cool and dark and awesome. And then I have Blood Air, which there was a, so much controversy around when it first came out as an arc, but I'm not sure. I haven't heard very much about it since then, so when I read it, I guess I will see. Now we're going to go over my nonfiction shelf. So this shelf is actually organized by subject instead of alphabetized by author last name. Right here I have two little bells. I got this one in Norway on our honeymoon and I got this one in Quebec um, on a trip that I went with my in-laws and my husband. This is all language books. So we have sign language, which I don't recommend learning from a book at all. French, we have Gaelic, Hebrew, Swedish, um, German, what else? Norwegian. And then right here we have Butter My Butt and Call Me a Biscuit, which is about like, it's like Southern sayings. My grandmother got it for me because I always make fun of her for having all these weird sayings and stuff. So I got that. And Talk the Talk, which I still have the price tag on, is slang of 65 American subcultures. So like it'll have like terms used by astrologers or by truckers or by furries or tattoo artists or whatever, goths. You know, just various terms like that, and it's very interesting. These are two, like, manuals for writers, like, more like research sort of things. This right here is called An Exaltation of Larks, and it's full of collective nouns for things. And then we get into sort of 
history and stuff like that. I have more books that are on just specifically writing, but they're at my desk instead of being on the shelf. The second shelf here has this little panda squishy. Um, some wax melts that I got from Amber Dior at Sadelier. Haven't got to use them yet. This little brain puzzle thing and these two pocket, like a pocket reference and this little mini Alexander Hamilton like fact book. But this is more history. It's mostly Ireland history. Right here I have pirate stuff. So like this is under the black flag. It's about romance and reality and other life things among pirates. This one's about famous women pirates. This one's about female tars, so it's, you know, a similar thing. And then we get into, like, government type things. This is just a book of speeches. It's 100 most influential speeches ever made. So it's got a lot of cool stuff on it. Or in it, I guess. And then we just have more, like, government type stuff and... So this is where our biographies begin. The first one is my favorite probably, and this is Carrie Fisher's The Princess Diaries. This is about her time in Star Wars, basically filming Star Wars movies. She has like several autobiographies, but they're at different points of her life, which I think is really cool. Another favorite is Schultz. Charles Schultz is the person who wrote the Charlie Brown Peanuts comics, cartoons. And it's really cool because it kind of shows like where he gets different ideas and different inspiration. Then I have this little book of Toulouse, the artist. So it's got some of his art pieces and then a little bit about his life inside. And then starting around here, I have more psychology type things. So this one is the collected schizophrenia. It's about someone who was initially diagnosed I think with bipolar disorder and then it changed to schizoaffective disorder because that's something that actually happens quite a bit. It's a series of essays about her experiences with that diagnosis. And then I have trauma and recovery right here. This is called Finding Your Bipolar Muse because a lot of people with bipolar disorder have a tendency to think that they can't be creative without the manic episodes. This is about managing your moods but also tapping into that creativity. And then we have this, which is Go to Esther and Bach. This is a, all about like creativity and how it, your brain processes things. Then we sort of have the sequel to that right here, which is Services and essences and it's again it's about your brain thinking and things like that. I have Don't Call Me Crazy which is a series of stories by different authors and their experiences with mental illness. Some of those authors include Libba Bray, um, V.E. Schwab, and Adam Silvera. And I also have this which is the Dow of Music and it kind of is all about sound psychology. And so I use this a little bit with what I do with music therapy because there's a lot of cool techniques in here. I have several books by Oliver Sacks. He is a neurologist, or was a neurologist, and he writes a lot of cool different books about different things with the brain. Musicophilia was probably my favorite by him because it's all about how your brain processes music and different ways that the brain can sort of malfunction and different ways that music can be involved in that. These are just some random books that we didn't have a spot for. And then we get into some like philosophy type things. After that we go down here and it kind of just becomes a mess from right here. It kind of goes into some tech things, some government type things. This is some neurology slash tech things. And at the very bottom we have the inventions and researchings and writings of Nikola Tesla. So that's pretty cool. And this is also where we just kind of keep some random like textbooks that we have to kind of weigh down the shelf. This right here is our Star Wars shelf, which is kind of a bench in the way. It's mostly made up of Star Wars Legends books of the Extended Universe. That was previously known as canon and is now not considered canon. This is another one that's in a different sort of order. This is actually in order of the timeline in the Legends universe. I'm not going to go over a lot in this one because it's all just like one long series, but I do have an R2-D2 pop. I have the original trilogy in VHS. 
my YouTube family actually got these for me. So I have this, and then I have Return of the Jedi, and then I also have The Empire Strikes Back. And as you can see, we have so many of these that we had to kind of double up the levels here. I got me a little Chewbacca. Here's the VHS case that those three um, light, light up VHS came in. And then when we get around here, we have like the Book of the Sith, which these are kind of like in-universe information kind of things. And then these are like Shakespeare Star Wars books. So it's like the original trilogy written in Shakespearean language. And this is just a graphic novel for the original trilogy. And then on the very bottom, we have like the newer books. And some Star Wars graphic novels. The reason these are down here is because they are also, I believe, in the new universe. But let's go back to the top shelf for just a minute because my favorite Star Wars trilogy is the Darth Bane trilogy. It's my favorite thing in Star Wars. Darth Bane had an apprentice called Xana or Darth Xana, and she was just really cool. She was like Wanda Maximoff, but in the Star Wars universe. Like the kind of magic and powers that she sort of had within the Force. And then here are some books that I keep on my desk. I have Post Secret, and then I have Wonder Book, Writing Your First Novel, and Writing in Fantasy and Science Fiction. So that's just where I keep my like writing books. And Post Secret's just really cool and interesting. If you don't know what Post Secret is, it was like this big project back in the day, like early 2000s, where people would send in postcards with their secrets to this big art project. So for example, this one says, I make fantasy stories because my real life sucks. I wonder who sent that one in. Hmm. But over here I have my library cart, which kind of just houses whatever I need it to house at the time. I usually use it when I'm doing a specific video and I have a lot of different books that I need for that video. I'll put them all on here. Right now it just has the book I'm reading, and then two books that I really want to read this month. This is my TBR machine. So basically those little balls are full of pieces of paper, and each piece of paper has a book written on it. So if I'm feeling a little risky, I just put a quarter in there and I see what book the machine wants me to read. And that is all for my library tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if there are any sections in my library that you would like me to go over more in the future. Like if there's any collections that you want me to go over and talk about each book individually or anything like that. As usual, please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to let out that breath you didn't know you were holding. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming under, pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under